afternoon, everyone. I'm Courtney Courtright. Thanks for joining us for 30 minutes of positive news. We begin with news out of New Bern, where Mumfest returned this past weekend. Vendors and event goers certainly were disappointed by its cancellation last year. But as Nine on Your Side's Claire Molay reports, people were happy to have it back. This will help my business. Like, say, I've done, um, we're probably up to like 60 or 70 shows so far. All of my shows this year since March have been up like one and a half times from 2019. At his seemingly extremely popular tent selling art for gardens and outdoor spaces, Todd Starnes from Greg's Art and Garden out of Covington, Kentucky, says that even with all the events he does throughout the year, Mumfest in New Bern is one of his biggest. It's great to be back. I think 2020 was a rough year. 2021 has been way above what we expected. It's great to come back to New Bern. It's typically um, one of my top five shows, and I do 90 shows a year. New Bern local and owner of Franklin's Antique Mall, Renee Franklin, says she enjoys the new customers the festival brings. Oh, it definitely changes it because, uh, like I said, it brings in a lot of out-of-towners, a lot of walkers, but traffic is really good, business is really good, and we really appreciate the efforts that the city of New Bern makes to bring business to downtown New Bern. People lined the streets waiting to get a picture under the Mum Fest arch, but that's just the beginning. All throughout the day, performances, displays, vendors, rides, music, and much more filled the streets. And people came for all different reasons. Probably the food. <laughs> oh yeah, De definitely the food. I want to give me some funnel cake. The ride. The rides? What ride are you going to do first? That one. First. And that was Claire Molay reporting. Attendees are looking to come back to New Bern to see a concert featuring Nelly. That's scheduled for October 29th. Now let's recognize special teachers and school officials here in the East. One local school administrator was named Principal of the Year for Craven County Schools. With the award comes a new position as well. Stacy Freeville of Havelock High School won the award. She will serve as the local advisor to the Board of Education and represent Craven County Schools in local, regional, and state events. She started the Freeville Focus newsletter to recognize and celebrate outstanding classrooms and teachers. She says being an educator during the pandemic is challenging, but this celebration is a reflection of all the hard work she and her staff have put in. I am surrounded every day by wonderful children and wonderful adults and I do my very best to serve them every single day. The school surprising Freeville with the award superintendent Dr. Wendy Miller says she knows Freeville will continue to put students first even in her new role. Congratulations to her and we're continuing to highlight teachers across the East who work tirelessly to educate students while facing a global pandemic. Nine on your sides, Caroline Boyer introduces us to an eighth grade teacher at EB Acock Middle School and shares how she is navigating teaching during the pandemic. There wasn't ever time to really recover from last year. So just not having that time to relax and chill before coming back into it. And it's just, it's been a lot. I mean, it's great, but it's been a lot. Teachers across the country have been working nonstop since the pandemic began. You will have until October 1st to turn it in. Jessica Denton is an eighth grade English teacher at E.B. Acock Middle School, preparing students to best pieces of evidence to enter high school. Some of them haven't been in the building since March of their sixth grade year. And that's a huge jump to go from sixth grade to eighth grade. Denton is finally able to interact with her students face to face, but the return to in-person learning brings new challenges. A lot of our students are struggling with like that social aspect because there's a lot of maturing that happens between sixth grade and eighth grade. And when you aren't here to interact with each other, that doesn't happen as quickly. The teacher wants people to understand she doesn't just have to focus on her students' education. I have students that are from a two-parent household and some that have parents they've never met. I have students that are from financially stable homes and I have students that don't know where their next meal is coming from. She also worries about what's going on outside of the classroom. I think people forget that it's not just the kids come in, you give a lesson, and then they leave. 
you have to take into account all of those things. While COVID has changed the world of education, it's made teaching harder. It's made this job harder, but I still love it. I love being able to come to work and be with my students. It hasn't changed the passion teachers like Denton have. In Greenville, Caroline Boyer, Nye, on your side. In Pitt County, students at a local school will now have a new facility to work out in. CM Amps Middle School cutting their ribbon for their state of the art fitness center. The students, faculty and community members were all excited to see this brand new facility open. They say after all the schools gone through in the past year, this boost was needed. A, a, a building full of damage and now we have more construction on site. So this is something that the students can use every single day and really truly be proud of. And it's something they have that no other middle school in the county has. Students will use the center every day during their PE classes and for after school sports practices. And this is so sweet. A two year old boy from Wilmington saw his dreams come true during a September birthday celebration. This is Phoenix right there with this convoy of Jeep cars parading in front of his family's house on his big day. The video you see was posted on social media with drivers waving at him during the parade, a day that was special for him for sure, those parades are awesome. As Hispanic Heritage Month is wrapping up, we're showing you a traditional dance that dates back between the 19th, 9th and 14th centuries. Nine on your sides, Victoria Holmes enjoyed a private lesson from a professional flamenco dancer. Today, I am a student in Professor Gabriela Estrada's class. If you know and you start listening, which is the key to learn flamenco, you learn that these are stories that this is poetry. Estrada breaks down the parts of a flamenco performance. It has the dance, it has the toping, the guitar playing, and the singing. Estrada is a scholar in this arena, even living in the Spanish city it originated from. The minute that I stepped in Sevilla, I just felt the same way that you feel when you go home after a long time and not being home. She brings all her expertise to East Carolina University's School of Theater and Dance, explaining to the students how it's a mixture of different cultures. It's talking about not only, yes, its relations to the Roma people, but it's also the Roma people, not all over, but those people who collaborated and became this melting pot with a community of Castilian, African, Latin American, Castilian, uh, Spanish, and the Moorish genealogy that happened there. When it made its way to America, Flamenco was also influenced by Latin American artists. I was able to book a private session with the professor, learning what all goes into the performance. While I did not have the same grace of Professor Estrada, she assured me in Flamenco it's not about being perfect. Yeah, flamenco is a universal art form, so it's about your soul. At the end of our session, I discovered it's not about copying Professor Estrada's dance moves, but instead adding my own unique flair to make it truly flamenco. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, open the door. Five, six, pick up sticks. Seven, eight, lay them straight. Okay. For Hispanic Heritage Month, I'm Victoria Holmes. If you want more positive stories, you can head to our website, WNCT.com. You'll see these stories and more under the Nine on the Positive Side tab. You can also download our WNCT Nine on Your Side news app. It's free on the Apple app and Google Play stores. You can rewatch our Nine on the Positive Side shows if you want as well. Next on Nine on the Positive Side, one couple is sharing their love story after a special wedding day. How they met and tied the knot in the same place ahead. Plus. Another couple is celebrating 70 years of marriage. What has a New York couple staying strong after many years? Welcome back to Nine on the Positive Side. Sometimes music can bring people together. It seems to be one reason why a couple from Ohio bonded. As Kenya Ramirez reports, it's now turned into their forever love story. Whitehall Yearling High School is where it all started for this couple. It's where they shared music, laughs, anything you could possibly think of. But little did they know, it's where they would tie the knot next. I'm so excited. Robert Kuhn and Sharon started off as friends in the fourth grade. 
We went all through high school together. They spent most of their youth at Whitehall Yearling High School, sharing many laughs. But the most memorable has been their first kiss they shared inside the band room. We met a lot down there. We talked a lot. We went to concerts and things together. After high school, life took matters into its own hands. He went on to college. I went my way. We both got married, had families. But fate brought them back together in April. I happened to just think of her name, came to my mind. I went online, found her phone number, and called her. Robert says after many years, the love was still there. So he asked her for her hand in marriage before it was too late. Not necessarily for age, but because of Robert's Parkinson's disease. I'm in stage five, which is the final stage. That's why it's so emotional. She, she's going to be there for me. And decided to say their vows in the new band room. Do you in the presence of God and these witnesses promise to love and to cherish? A place that seemed fitting after connecting through music all these years. I love her. Now Robert is seeking treatment for his Parkinson's disease in Chicago, so he is planning on moving to Reynoldsburg to be with his wife. Local for you, Kenny Ramirez, NBC4. Love is in the air at this fall festival in Indiana. Nate Allen and Jaden Ketchum rode the Ferris wheel for their first date. And now seven years later, they're taking the next step. They got engaged. The fair holds many special moments for the couple. It's always been special because that's where we had our first date. We come every year, but now that, you know, is where our engagement took place, it'll always be, you know, something we remember. Yeah, be something that we you know, we can bring future generations down to and yeah. kind of share in the same moments with us. As for holding their wedding ceremony at the fall festival, well, the couple says they're not planning on it, but this festival, I'm sure, will always have a special place in their hearts. And let's stick with love stories because why not? A Brooklyn couple has been through a lot over the years, and they're adding celebrating their 70th wedding anniversary to the list. Monica Morales has the couple's love story from New York City. There's a very special party going on here on the Upper West Side celebrating romance, a love that has stood the test of time and could teach younger couples what it takes to make love last. I guess I love her very much. I stayed with her for 70 years. <laughs> They've been married 70 years and they still find each other irresistible. You want to give me a kiss? Mm. Delicious. She was a good looking blonde. He loves blondes. It was 70 years ago, Norman and Carol Cohen from Brooklyn exchanged wedding vows and headed to a honeymoon in Cuba. So the theme of their anniversary party Thursday is Little Havana. Just shake the shoulders. He's not the dancer I was. Their incredible love story began when they first met through mutual friends and decided on a whim to go on their first date. I love everything about her. At the time, Norman was in college and working at night, so he says he had to seize the moment, and he says Carol was quite a catch. Talking about her now makes him cry a little. Do I cry? Yes. Why? Why? Because I'm just emotional. Both born in Brooklyn, the couple married at Casa del Rey in 1951. Their wedding song, Tony Bennett's Because of You. Because of you, my romance. <laughs> that was our first dance. Carol is 89. Wow. Norman okay. is 93. Uh, really For the past two years, they have lived happily on the Upper West Side. Their love story has become the envy of their friends. <laughs> Not an easy <laughs> undertaking, but they did. <laughs> this loving couple says what they are most proud of now is their family. Oh their God. advice to and other so couples no who decide to tie the knot. Make sure that you, you do things together and want to do things together. I just love him. They say the secret to the success of their love is one word, and that's compromise. If there's a second word, it would be compassion if they make mistakes even though Norman says Carol is perfect in every way. On the Upper West Side, Monica Morales, Fix 11 News. Congrats to all the happy couples. Coming up on 9 on the positive side, a missing tortoise reunites with his owner after two months of being gone. We'll tell you how he got away next. Plus, one fitness club was joined by a very special guest. How members of the club reacted to a gobbling visitor.
Flying Tortoise was finally reunited with its owner nearly two months after being out on the loose in Louisiana. Major Tom is a 100 pound 30 to 40 year old Sakata tortoise. The owner, Trisha LeBlanc, owns several turtles and she noticed Major Tom right there was missing from his backyard enclosure about two months ago. Although turtles are slow, they're known to be escape artists. Mr. Tom gets his name from none other than David Bowie's. And so all of my tortoises, I have four, they all have a David Bowie themed name. So we have Ziggy Shell Dust. We have a mated pair named Diamond and Dog, and then we named him Major Tom because he's just, he's major, he's huge. <laughs> the Humane Society estimates a dozen tortoises as pets in one part of the New Orleans metropolitan area. As the weather cools down, many people will take their fitness routines indoors, and one gym had a new member interested in joining a turkey. Now a turkey snuck into Anytime Fitness in Wisconsin when a member walked in. Two other members were able to corner the turkey and get it into the car. It's crazy that it just sat there. It, it kind of looked it, at you? Yeah, it looked at me, it looked out the window. It didn't really even try to fight me in the back seat of the car. The Lockmans turned the turkey over to a humane officer who placed the hen in foster care. Not something you see every day. From the Only in Australia files now, take a look at what one man found as he was putting dishes away this week. Yeah, that's a snake. Journalist Keith Williams posted these images of a massive snake curled up in his glassware. Williams says he was tired and put away half the dishes before noticing the huge carpet python in his kitchen. I don't know what I would do. And he didn't panic. He simply opened the window and waited for the snake to slither away. Williams said on Twitter, quote, all is returning to normal. I've got a lot of washing up to redo, end quote. We know there's good news happening all around Eastern North Carolina, and we want to know about it. Send story ideas to the email you see right there on your screen. Put nine on the positive side in the subject line. You can also reach out to me on Facebook or on Twitter. And just ahead on that on the positive side, Beethoven's last symphony is done. How a computer made it all possible ahead. For music lovers, Beethoven's 10th symphony is now complete, but get this, it was done with the help of a computer. Members of the Beethoven project used algorithms to finish composing the symphony. The algorithm used included sharing with a computer snippets of Beethoven, then they would show a computer what was appropriate and what could be viewed as a mistake. After a long learning process, creators said the program made big strides forward to get the job done. And that's all the time we have for now, but before we let you go, we wanted you to see a baby rhino named Hala that got welcomed into the world last week. Have a great rest of your afternoon. She's adorable.